Hello and welcome to this ultimate walking talking mark for GCSE computer science and in this particular walking talking mark we're going to be looking at OCR's 2022 paper one. Before watching this video I strongly recommend looking at the introduction video for all GCSEs in computer science for all exam boards where you'll get some general hints and tips about how to prepare for the equipment that you need to take into the exam and get ready for starting the exam. Before we start, let's take a look at the front of the question paper. We can see that the time allowed is one hour and 30 minutes and that you must not use a calculator. We can also see that the total mark for this paper is 80. Now one hour and 30 minutes is 90 minutes and so we can see that we have got approximately one minute per mark in the exam paper, which should help us to pace our way through the exam. You'll notice that the instructions say to use black ink and that you can use HB pencil, but only for graphs and diagrams. Now, I'll be showing my answers using blue ink purely so that you can see them uh, shown on the exam paper more clearly. It says that you should use the space provided, but if you need extra space, there are lined pages at the end of this booklet. If you do use those lined pages at the end of the booklet, please make a note on the paper to say that you have used extra pages. Otherwise, the examiner may not know, and it may not be spotted and joined together when it comes to marking. You can also use additional sheets of paper. And if you read my advice about all exam papers for GCSE Computer Science, you'll see that I advise asking for an additional sheet of paper straight away so that you can write out your binary line and hexadecimal uh, letters. We can also see that the marks for each question are shown in brackets, and I will be talking about those marks as we go through each question. And the, the quality of extended response will be assessed in any questions marked with an asterisk. We'll talk about that when we get to it. There is some advice here about reading each question carefully before you start your answer and we're going to focus very much on that and looking at highlighting the important parts of the question as we go through uh, our answers. You'll also notice that in the instructions it said answer all the questions. Again if you watch my hints and tips um, advice for all exam papers you'll see that that's not actually necessary. What is important is that you maximise the marks that you can get. And if there is a question that you can't answer, don't worry about it. Focus on what you can do and don't worry about the questions that you can't. You can always try to find one or two marks in those questions, but don't spend a long time on them. Right, the invigilator is about to say, let's begin. So I'm now going to start our one hour, 30 minute timer. Question 1B. Convert the deanery number 221 into 8-bit binary. Show your working. Okay, well, on the right-hand side, we can see the specification area this has come from, and we can see the binary line, which is what we're going to need to do to convert this. Uh, you'll notice uh, that this is worth two marks, and uh, therefore this could either be that you get one mark per nibble of what you get correct, or it could be that you get one mark for your working out and one mark for the correct answer. Now, I've, I've highlighted here the fact that we've got 8-bit binary. And you'll notice there's a highlighter pen um, specifically on this question. And that is because we've got to be very, very wary that the examiners are only looking for 8-bit answers. So if we show 9 bits or 7 bits, we're going to lose out on a mark, even if you've done all your calculations perfectly. You'll also notice that it says that you must show your working. Um, that, that almost convinced me now that the first mark out of these two is going to be for your working out uh, and therefore you must show that uh, in order to get the answers. Um, so we're going to use this binary line which hopefully you've already written out um, on a spare piece of paper or somewhere in your exam so you've got it ready for questions like this. Um, and we're going to need the main deanery numbers part of the binary line. So I'm going to put that in for my working out onto the question. Now we're looking for the number 221. So we know that we need 128 at least uh, 
into our number. So we need to put a, a one bit in 128. So that leaves us with 128 out of 221. So we need to find out what's left. So we're going to do a calculation of 221 minus 128. So 221 minus 128. And we're going to need to do quite a bit of borrowing here. So first of all, we need to do 11, which means take away, uh, borrow 1 from the 2. 11 minus 8 is 3. Now we've got 1 take away 2, so we'll change that to 11 and borrow another 1 from the 2. 11 take away 2 is 9. And 1 take away 1 is, of course, 0. So we've got 93 left. Right, that was harsh, wasn't it? Um, and I wouldn't blame you if at this point you thought, well, I'm going to move on to another question. I'll come back to this later. It, it, it really is um, harsh to have such a, a complicated question so near to the beginning. Uh, you've got to know your maths to do this. Um, so we know now that we need 93. Uh, right, so we definitely need 64. So we'll put a 1 bit in 64. But now we need to know what else we need left. So we've now got to look at 93 minus 64 to see what else is left to put into our binary line. So we'll take 93, subtract uh, 64, which is what we've used. We're going to need to borrow from the 9, so we'll go for 13 and borrow from 9 to give 8. 13 minus 4 is 9, 8 minus 6 is 2, which gives us 29, which we now need to fit in our binary line. Well, we definitely don't need 32, so we can put a 0 there, um, but we are going to need 16. Um, so now we've got a bit of an easier calculation. We're going to look at what is left when we subtract 16 from 29, and we can see that we get 13. So in order to make up 13, we're definitely going to need 8. And then we'll do another calculation of 13 minus 8 is 5. Um, so for that, we're definitely going to need um, a 4. And we can see really without a calculation that we're going to need a 1 at the end. Um, so what I'm going to do now is to make it absolutely clear to the examiner where my answer is, I'm going to write it out again at the bottom. Now what you may have found during this question was first of all it took you a lot longer than two minutes but that's okay because the first question um, took us less than the four minutes um, but also you may not have had enough space to write this um, in your um, question paper so do if you do need to use an additional sheet of paper or further on in your booklet make it clear write down on the question on where you'd put the answer see page for example 15 or C additional sheet one, so that the examiner knows to look for your answer. Question two. Complete the table by writing the missing definitional name of each of the common CPU components and registers. So I put the common CPU components and registers from the specification on the right hand side of the screen. This question is worth four marks, and we can see there are four gaps, and so it's going to be one mark per gap. So we'll have a look at the first one. I've put the highlighter pen on the screen uh, to remind us that there are going to be particularly important words to highlight in these um, definitions. So the first one, um, it stores the address of the next instruction to be fetched from memory. So an instruction that's fetched from memory, and it increments during each fetch etch each fetch execute cycle. So it's storing the address. Um, so it's very likely we'd probably go for memory address register because uh, it's storing the address. But just bear in mind I make deliberate mistakes. Um, the next uh, one is the control unit. Um, now the control unit is looking for a definition here. So I'm going to write a straightforward definition but it, um, it controls the flow um, of data uh, within the CPU. However, uh, I'm not restricted to writing uh, just that. Um, it doesn't say maximum of one thing. So just in case that wasn't enough or I didn't actually get the mark with that, I'm going to write something else to back it up. I'm going to also say that um, as well as within the CPU, it's and between the CPU and the RAM. Okay, so we'll look at the next definition. It says it stores the address of the data to be fetched from or the address where the data is to be stored. So we're looking at memory address register again. 
we're thinking we've already put that. Um, and when we see the word data, so it's tempting to go for memory data register, but it's actually the address that it's storing. And the address means that it's definitely the memory address register. Now that means we've probably done something wrong uh, in the first one. So we're going to go back to that and have a look now. Um, now we should have highlighted a little bit more because it says it stores the address of the next instruction to be fetched from memory and also that it increments during each fetch execute cycle. So this is the importance of reading every single word in the question. So the one increments automatically and is the next instruction is stored in the program counter. So we'll cross out memory address register and put program counter. The last one says it performs mathematical calculations and logical operations. Right, that is straightforward. Um, the mathematical and logical operations means it's the arithmetic logic unit. I hope you found those two questions useful. You're now ready to look at the other questions from the Walking Talking Mock for the rest of this exam paper. You can find out how to access the full Walking Talking Mock at www.paullong.net forward slash WT Mocks or by clicking the link in the top right hand corner. The full Walking Talking Mock for this paper includes an additional video showing how the mark scheme is applied and details that need to be considered from the examiner's report to help you understand even further how to maximise the marks that your students can achieve in this exam.